he hit go live. As we always know, that doesn't necessarily mean I'm live. It just means I hit a button and Facebook is doing whatever it wants to do. And we're on. Hello. Welcome to Tea and New Book Tuesday. My tea for today is Tazo's Glazed Lemon Loaf, which is an herbal tea. So if I seem like I have slightly less energy than usual, it's because I'm trying to reduce my caffeine. I think it might help me sleep better and other good things. Hello, how is everyone doing for your Tuesday? How was everyone's week? Today we're gonna to talk about historical fiction, romance and women's lit. Uh, so I have a lot of historical fiction. I think one women's lit and two or three romance. But before we get into that, have you checked out all the stuff that's going on on face on this Facebook page and also on the children's page for MPL for Tales and Tales, our summer program? Because we are doing so much stuff. Uh, we are trying to do live of, like in-person events whenever possible as well, now that things are opening up more. So you want to check in with your local branch and see what they're doing because it's likely you could bring your kids down to the library and maybe see some animals or something like that. So we got all sorts of stuff going on. But let's go ahead and get into the giveaway because I think that's becoming a big part of how we do this show. I really like doing it this way because I can get the books out to you faster um, and you don't have to wait until Friday to see who wins and all that good stuff. So I have five books. I can offer up as, as in the previous weeks, the way this works is I'm gonna show you five books that I have to give out. I only have one copy of each this time around. Uh, you can pick the one you are most interested in, put the title and your MPO location for pickup in the comments below. I will give the book to whoever is the first to comment with that title. I ask that you only put one down um, if it's still Tuesday or Wednesday and all the books are gone, I may find you another book because as you see, I've got more books back here to give away. Uh, so I may contact you with that or offer you a different one or anything like that. Uh, the biggest advantage is if you're watching it live, but I'm definitely giving out books to people who are watching it within a day or two of the live broadcast. So don't be too discouraged if you can't watch this live. You still have a chance to get a book. Uh, although those who watch it live obviously get first choice. Okay, so let's start. I'm giving away mostly romance and one historical fiction. So our first book is Susan Wiggs, The Lost and Found Bookshop. Uh, this is a thought-provoking, wise, and emotionally rich novel from a New York Times bestseller. In the wake of a shocking tragedy, Natalie Harper inherits her mother's charming but financially strapped bookshop in San Francisco. She becomes caretaker for her ailing grandfather, Andrew, her only living relative, not counting her scoundrel father. But the gruff, deeply kind Andrew has begun displaying signs of decline. Natalie thinks it's best to move him to an assistant living facility to ensure the care he needs. To pay for it, she plans to close the bookshop and sell the derelict but valuable building on historic Perdita Street, which is in need of constant fixing. There's only one problem. Grandpa Andrew owns the building and refuses to sell. Natalie adores her grandfather. She'll do whatever it takes to make his final years happy. Besides, she loves the store and its books provide welcome solace from her overwhelming grief. After she moves into a small studio apartment above the shop, Natalie carries out her grandfather's request and hires contractor Peter Gallagher to do the necessary and ongoing repairs. His younger daughter, Dorothy, also becomes a regular at the store, and she and Natalie begin reading together while Peach works. To Natalie's surprise, her sorrow begins to dissipate as her life becomes, more, becomes an unexpected journey of new connections, discoveries, and revelations. From unearthing artifacts hidden in the bookshop's walls to discovering the truth about her family, her future, and her own heart. This came out, I think, a year ago or so. It looks very nice. Yeah, it came out a year ago. Okay, the next 
book up for giveaway is Christina Lauren's Love and Other Words. Uh, this is the first women's fiction from New York Times bestselling author Christina Lauren. It's about childhood sweethearts reuniting after a decade and many unsolved issues. And it's recommended for readers of Jojo Moyes and Taylor Jenkins Reid. Ooh, ooh, yes. Okay, Mary Sorensen is settling into an ambitious, if emotionally tepid routine. Work hard as a new pediatrics resident, plan her wedding to an older financially secure man, keep her head down and heart tucked away. But when she runs into Elliot, I'm not attempting to announce, pronounce his last name. Uh, I think it's Greek. Anyway, the first and only love of her life, the careful bubble she constructed begins to dissolve. Once upon a time, Elliot was Macy's entire world, growing from her gangly teen friend into a man who coaxed her heart open again after the loss of her mother, only to break it on the very night he declared his love for her. So that's Christina Lauren's Love in Other Words. Next up we have, this is YA. This is um, McCall Hoyle's Meet the Sky. And if you aren't reading YA, you should think about it because there's a lot of really good writers and really interesting stories uh, to find there. So this is from an award-winning author. It's a story of love letting go and the unstoppable power of nature. It all started with an accident, the one that caused Sophie's dad to walk out of her life, the one that left Sophie's older sister Meredith barely able to walk at all. With nothing but pain in the past, all Sophie wants is to plan our future, keep the family business running, get accepted to veterinary school, and protect her mom and sister from another disaster. But when a hurricane forms off the coast of North Carolina's Outer Banks and heads right towards the island, Sophie realizes nature is one thing she can't control. It's got all sorts of blurbs of people saying how wonderful it is, and YA Book Central gave it five stars. That is Meet the Sky. Our second to last is Sweet Sorrow by David Nichols. This is described as from the best-selling author of One Day comes a bittersweet and brilliantly funny coming of age tale about a heart-stopping thrill of first love and how just one summer can change life forever. They don't really have a description on the back for me. We'll see if you're interested in that one. And then our one historical, our uh, historical fiction is The Blind Light by Stuart Evers. This is set in 1950 or begins in 1959. Two young soldiers, Drummond and Carter, one working class, the other privileged, form an intense and unlikely friendship at Doomtown, a training center that stimulates the aftermath of an atomic strike. Years later, the men watch in horror as the events of the Cuban Missile Crisis unfold. Carter, now a high-ranking British government official, offers Drummond a way to save himself and his family in the event of a nuclear strike. Their pact, kept secret, will have devastating consequences for the very lives they seek to, to protect. It also indicates that it starts in 59, but it spans all the way to the present. Okay, so if you want any of these five books, just put their name in the comments below, plus the MPL location you prefer per pickup. And as soon as I see it, I will send it off. I try to have some ready, like before I take my lunch hour, which is at noon. And I'll look again later today. Um, so yeah, the faster you respond, the faster I'll get to it and send it out to you. And if you're in Maine, you may be able to pick up today or you're near Maine, I should say. But let's go ahead and share our screen and get into the books that are coming out in July. Starting off with historical fiction. Let's present, present, and get into it. Go, go, go. We already did the giveaway. We're going into historical fiction because now is the time of that. All right. Starting off with A Woman of Intelligence by Karen Tanabe, Tanabe, something like that. 
Okay. Katrina had a seemingly perfect life. She's a lifelong New Yorker. And now she has a Fifth Avenue apartment, an ideal doctor husband, kids, parties at the plaza, the whole nine yards. Um, but she is a highly educated person who speaks four languages and used to work at the United Nations. Her current ideal domestic setup is lovely, but it is a bit confining and she can't help but want more. And then she's approached by the FBI. One of her, a man she knew from her past has become a Soviet spy and they need someone to infiltrate his circle. And she has all the right credentials up and down and left and right. They also need someone to curry secret documents. Yes, like, yes, super secret documents from DC to New York. And throughout all of this, she's going to have to keep it secret and keep it from everyone around her, even though she will ultimately be endangering herself and everyone in her life. This got the starred review from Publishers Weekly. So if you're interested in a woman of intelligence, it comes out July 20th. All right. The Love Song of W.E. Du Bois by Honoré Fanon Jeffers. Uh, Jeffers was nominated for the National Book Award for Poetry in 2020, I want to say. I didn't write it down, but it's very recent. This is her first fiction novel. This is her first novel. Um, so W. Du Bois, and this is all true, he wrote about something called the double consciousness a sensitivity that every African-American has to possess in order to survive. So that's sort of where part of the title for this book is coming from. Our protagonist in the book is Eileen Pearl. She knows this feeling all too well. She spends most of the year in a city up north, but spends every summer in a small town in Georgia where her mother's family is from. To come to terms with her identity, she's going to have to start to dig into her family's past. She's going to have to embrace the legacy that comes with being the descendant of enslaved peoples and everything that that entails. They describe it as bondage and independence, oppression and resilience, cruelty. More resilience, yes. Um, so this got starred reviews from Kirkus. Booklist and Publishers Weekly. If there's a short list for best books of the year, I think it's already on it. Uh, we're also getting a large print if you're interested in that. If you're interested in the love songs of W.E. Du Bois, it comes out July 27th. All right, The Forest of, Forest of Vanishing Stars. Yeah, okay. So in this story, which I would point out, A Woman of Intelligence was set in World War II. And almost all the historical fiction I added today is set in World War II, except for the love song of W. E. Du Bois. That's the only one. Because Americans read a lot of books about World War II and the Holocaust. Okay, so The Force of Vanishing Stars by Kristen Harmel. Uh, the main character was kidnapped from a German wealthy family and raised in the Eastern European wilderness by her kidnapper. When her kidnapper dies in 1941, she's alone in, in the woods and she encounters a bunch of Jewish people who are basically running for their lives. She decides she's going to teach them how to survive in the Eastern European wilderness that she's been in for years. And through them, she'll learn how to open herself up and let people in again. This is inspired by true stories. It got a star and review from Publishers Weekly. We are getting the audiobook as well. If you're interested in The Forest of Vanishing Stars, it comes out July 6th. All right, All Our Shimmering Skies by Trent Dalton. Okay, so this is a little, this, okay, this one's a different historical fiction. And I had trouble understanding it. Like I read the description two or three times and it's kind of all over the place. What I do know is that it's set in World War II, of 
course, in Australia, Japanese bombs are raining down on the country. Our main character, Molly, is a grave digger's daughter. And she needs to go in search of someone she believes has cursed her family. This has been described as historical fiction combined with magical realism. Which I then had to go look up magical realism because I'm like, I've heard this used a few different ways. And I'm not entirely sure what it's supposed to mean. It's kind of fantasy light, like there's some magical elements, but the majority of the world is recognizable as our own world. So, is there anything else? Yes, this got starred reviews from Booklist and Publishers Weekly. If you're interested in all our shimmering skies, it comes out July 6th. It's always nice when I have to look. Okay, How to Find Your Way in the Dark by Derek B. Miller. This is set in rural Massachusetts in World War II. Of course it is. Uh, this is about 12-year-old Sheldon. He's dealing with the loss of his mother when his father is killed in suspicious circumstances. He's orphaned, so he goes to live with his uncle and his cousins, but he's convinced his father was murdered. He's very angry about it and is ready to enter a world of crime to find the culprit, culprit and get revenge. Apparently, Derek B. Miller has written about Shelton before. He was in a book called Norwegian by Night. And in that book, he's, that book is contemporary and he's an 80 year old man. So this I think has been written so that you don't have to have read that book, especially since it's a prequel that makes sense. Um, and if you wanted an in, so yeah, you could start here and then if you like it, go read Norwegian by Night and see if you continue to like Sheldon as an old man. I also think this might be the first of a series, but at any rate, it got the, a starred review from Publishers Weekly. If you're interested in how to find your way in the dark, it comes out July 27th. All right, Radar Girls by Sarah Ackerman. It, Daisy is more of a country girl than a society girl at the time of, can we guess it? Do we know what time period? World War II. She's, uh, the attack on Pearl Harbor makes her feel, as many people felt, that she needs to serve her country. So she enlists in a program that would make her a pilot. This is a special program of women pilots who would guide male pilots to blackened out airstrips and also patrol the skies for unidentified aircraft. Not everyone around the training program is in favor of it or believes that it should be staffed with women. So she has the challenging task in front of her of learning to be a soldier, a pilot, and you know, a strong independent lady person in the midst of a lot of conflict uh, in World War II. It's also still set, she's, she, it's set in Hawaii. I, was, I don't know how to get into that, but that is what it is. And we are getting the audiobook for this one as well. So if you're interested in Radar Girls, it comes out July 27th. All right, let's move on to romance and women's lit. Starting with It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey. Uh, Piper is a Hollywood it girl. And one of her wild nights ultimately leads, to, ultimately leads to her getting arrested. Her stepfather, who controls her money, decides he's had enough. He sends her, he cuts her off financially and sends her to work at her late father's dive bar in a coastal town in Washington State. So she's very out of her element. She's not in Hollywood. She's now in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, naturally, she meets a handsome sea captain who is gruff and broody and with whom she does not get along at all. But of course, they will fall in love and she will come to love the small town, small town life. It's described as uh, Schitt's Creek or very Schitt's Creek-like uh, and a romantic comedy. It got both, star, it got starred reviews from both Kirkus and Booklist. If you're interested in It Happened One Summer, 
Uh, it comes out July 13th. One of the reasons so many books I'm doing this month have star reviews is because I have to find some way. There's so many books coming out in July, guys. I, I cannot even begin to show you all of them. So when I'm sorting through them, I'll look and see how many copies are we buying? And is it really well reviewed? And those two things get it sorted to the top of the list. And a lot of the things that didn't get that sort of end up in the discussion board posts that I put up pretty much every week at this point of the fiction books that got eliminated from that category, which I already have ready and should have up probably right after this, like 11.30 or 12. But moving on to The One You're With by Laura K. Denton. So high school sweethearts Mac and Eddie are raising their family in a small town near Mobile, Alabama. Based on the description of the town, of it being historic and seemingly perfect, I think the author means fair hope. But maybe I'm, I, I, I do generally not know the small towns in Mobile County as well as I do, because I live over in Baldwin County. Um, so yeah, maybe it's, maybe, maybe it's Spanish for it, but I think it's probably fair hope. But their seemingly perfect life is called into question when a one young woman walks into Mac's office who has a connection to their past. This event brings upheaval to both their personal and professional lives. It's worth pointing out this is the women's lit title, so this one isn't quite romance. But if you're interested in the one you're with, it comes out July 6th. So many things come out July 6th. I don't know why they felt that we couldn't read uh, over the, or that we wouldn't buy something and immediately read it over the fourth holiday. But I don't know. Everything comes out the sixth. Anyway, Have We Met by Camille Baker. This is a debut author that got her sorted to the top and got her in, in, in this broadcast. Um, after losing a friend to cancer, Corrine has a mysterious app appear on her phone. It's called Met. And it shows her the profiles of four men whom she already knows. They're from her past, promising that one of them is her soulmate. She didn't sign up for this. She has no interest in this. And she's kind of already met a guy she's interested in. Um, but various collisions with her past make her think maybe she should consider it. And ultimately, she's asking herself if she should leave what's in front of her for the sake of possible fate and perfection. It currently has a four-star rating from early readers. If you're interested in Have We Met, it comes out July 1st. So this one, you could get before the fourth weekend and read it then. Uh, there's a lot of buzz about this one. Aloha with Love by Lindy Miller and Terrence Brody. Lindy Miller wrote several Hallmark, Hallmark movies. Um, based on the titles, I think she wrote like nine months of the year Hallmark movies versus the Christmas ones. But this book is already going to be a motion picture. Like they have the picture of the actors on the cover. Is that the actors? I think it is. I'm not super sure, but it's definitely going to be a movie because I think I saw a preview for the movie before I saw that the book was coming out. So they got on this one fast. Anyway, Jenna has had a rough week in the city. She misses out on a job opportunity and then she's dumped by her boyfriend. Then she gets even more bad news. Her beloved aunt has died. Uh, aunt May owned a piece of land with a ramshackle old house on it in Hawaii. Jenna is allowed in the will to sell it, but first she's required to renovate it. And the will stipulates who the contractor has to be for the renovation. His name is Ben. And of course, Ben is handsome and drives Jenna crazy. But Jenna is still determined to sell the house and return to her life in the city, even though the more time she spends in Hawaii, the more she realizes her life in the city might not have been all that fulfilling. If you're interested in Aloha with Love, it comes out July 13th. All right. 
Our last book for today is The Man Ban by Nicola Marsh. Um, Harper has banned man, banned men from her life ever since a disastrous breakup about a year ago. At a friend's wedding, she's there as a guest, obviously, but she's also a food stylist and she's made the tablescapes and things. And everyone's full of compliments except the best man, uh, Manny, who insults her work. As retaliation, she sets him up for an embarrassing and public prank. That should be the end of it. But then Harper and Manny run into each other while she's on the job in New Zealand. When Manny turns out to be more complex than she initially thought, she considers that maybe her man ban only needs to apply to dating in the U.S. and not the occasional hookup in New Zealand. Uh, and Manny, the character, is half Indian and half Caucasian. So there's also a little diversity to this story. If you're interested in the man ban, it comes out July 27th. All right. We have reached the end of today's list of books. Remember that if you'd like any of the books I discussed at the beginning of the show, any of these five, put the name of the book and your MPL location for pickup in the comments below. Uh, I am. I have added all of these books to our Goodreads page, Tea and New Book Tuesday, and I will also do a discussion post on the books that I eliminated from this episode. And of course, subscribe to our newsletter, we, uh, which I put out at 11 a.m. right when the show goes live every week. The link for that is in the description. Next week, we are going to talk about uh, science fiction, fantasy, and horror, which is, of course, my favorite week of the month let me out okay thank you for watching and i will see you all next tuesday